Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for the latest and hottest NASA anti-asteroid technology? I give you a space shotgun that shoots balls. No, seriously, bro. Step one, deploy the shotgun. Step two, point at target. Step three, shoot the shotgun. Step four, win. Fire shotgun, win. Oh my God, is this real? Thor News presents. And hey, Alex, technically, if you wanted to have a good example, artist interpretation, of the arm program, wouldn't that dog only be getting a pepperoni instead of the whole slice of the pizza? NASA's bold asteroid capture mission pluck. Stay cool. I don't know if you know this, Thor News is for winners, and that's why you're here. So stick around. This is something NASA rejected. Houston, be advised, we've got a video message. I'm gonna have to science the shit out of this. Hit the button, baby. Stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents. Welcome to tonight's meeting of Asteroid Fight Club. 2016 is pretty fucked up. And if you haven't guessed it by now, Asteroid Fight Club is for adults. What is Asteroid Fight Club? Well, an asteroid is a metaphor for anything that can disrupt or destroy civilization as we know it. And it is our mission as our generation to not let everything fall apart on our watch because that would be disgraceful. So we have to understand the problems and then figure out how to solve them together. Tall order, I know. But we're all very, very special. We've been 7,000 years in the forging just to be the people we are today. So I need you at the top of your game. All right, NASA watch. Armed defenders forecast nasty things if it is canceled. By Keith Cowling on June 7th, 2016. Saving NASA's arm and the journey to Mars. Op-ed Louise Friedman, Space News. The House Appropriations Committee may have just induced such a paralysis by proposing to block funding for NASA's asteroid redirect mission, ARM. Yeah, I've made fun of ARM. It's, it's really, if that's the best they can come up with, it's not very good. And I think it was to pluck an asteroid and then take it somewhere and then scrape it, mine it, and 3D print it. And I failed to see how that would help civilization if there was a giant space rock headed our way. And we only had like, three months to prepare for it, or to blow it to bits out of the sky with sonic weaponry. Or an ion wave cannon? This mission represents the first step in the journey to Mars, and not only is the mission supposed to protect Earth from deadly space rocks, but it was also supposed to be a great help to the journey to Mars. How? I don't know, man. Really. Advances needed technologies for Mars and gives Orion and SLS their first real exploration mission. If their action to stop ARM is allowed to stand, there will be no human space exploration earlier than 2030. Well, that is depressing. We landed back on Earth from the moon on my first birthday, 1972. The last time we've been to the moon and did any real type of human space exploration. That's like a 70 year gap. I mean, robots are cool and all, but I can think of a lot of good reasons to keep human beings in the game. If their action to stop arm is allowed to stand, there will be no more human space exploration earlier than 2030. A delay of at least five and more, likely 10 years, in any journey to Mars. The space community's lack of support for NASA and ARM is a shot in our foot. A delay of at least five and more likely 10 years in any journey to Mars. The space community's lack of support for NASA and ARM is a shot in our foot. And we were already hobbling on crutches with one broken arm and shattered collarbone. That is not good news. It's political. It's political lesson of undermining a presidential initiative for a human Mars goal will not be lost. Well, I'm not sure that's so great. Has there ever been a political lesson that anyone has learned that anybody liked? The House Appropriations Committee may have just induced such a paralysis. The community's fractionation, whereby the scientists are happy with their robotic missions, the industry is happy with their rocket contracts, and the technologists are happy with their flight demonstrations. This leaves out only the public who would like to see a grander human venture marshalling the talents of all these communities. It's like we're strip mining our entire system. Why would Earthlings do that? It definitely has an off-world bent feel to it. Anti-human for sure. Nobody expects the artificial intelligence inquisition. Although the house language must still go to conference with the Senate, it seems unlikely anyone in that body will fight too hard to save the asteroid mission. Capitol Hill sources told ours, even if the administration vetoes the bill, it doesn't really matter to Congress because key members of Obama's leadership team, including NASA Administrator Charles Bolden, 
will probably be gone next year. This year's legislation effectively lays down a marker for negotiations with the new occupant of the White House in 2017. If the human space exploration program is ever going to come back alive, it's going to need presidential leadership. We're going to need a plan and direction. But right now, America is dog paddling, chasing its tail. And I would say its spirit is low. Keith Snow. Come on, Lou. The reason that so many people are against ARM is that its avowed purpose of enabling humans to go to Mars has been repeatedly demonstrated to be bogus. At best, a needless detour. Well, it was a crappy idea. I'm just kind of silly all the way around. Friedman's own words focus on the case in point. ARM is an attempt to give SLS Orion somewhere to go other than Mars. The Planetary Society co-hosted the workshop that spawned the idea and helped lobby the White House to include it as a feel-good thing to do. So their disappointment is understandable. ARM's total lack of credibility in any reasonable journey to Mars scenario is widely accepted by the robotic and human exploration communities alike. Why do all these articles have to be sad today? There's nothing worse than an asteroid fight club meeting that is sad. What happened to all the leadership? And I find myself often asking, what is the end game here? I really hope it's good, because we have all the resources on our planet and within our solar system to do whatever we want to do. At this point, we're still cavemen, but sure yet, we're driving fancy cars, we built high-rise apartments, and we're becoming fast friends with artificial intelligence. But as long as man is still fighting man for ancient reasons, We've barely stepped out of the cave, man. Asteroid sucker punch. Nobody wants that.